Yeah, I guess we could. You know what's cool about the Who? And it's interesting is they're obviously they're not unsung at all. But you you know everybody's quick to mention Beatles, Stones, but Who is like still persistent, and they're kind of a polarizing band. And I and I know we are as well. So I think if we're linked maybe in our path to anybody. It's probably to the Who. I feel at the end kind of came full circle that to me even, you know, Baba Yaga, my favorite Who song, is bulletproof in some weird ways. It's got, it's reminiscent of the riff. I wanted the lyrics to be direct but couldn't find my voice on that first attempt. I wanted them to be these slogans that you could put on a billboard or you could say as a, as a pirate radio DJ, like, it's funny, because all the slogans are very interchangeable between the corporation and the DJ and the gangs and stuff, and, but they're all using the same verbiage and, and language, but yet it means something different depending on who's using it. So, um, but fame is now injectable was a, a really big line for me. There's a few, few lines on the record that, that stand out. Planetary has a lot of them, but that's what I wanted to say, you know, and saying faith is unavailable as well. Like, I feel like that's the kind of world we live in right now. Fame is injectable, but faith is unavailable to us. Oh, man. Terry Gilliam? Terry Gilliam, yeah. probably, yeah, that's perfect. He's fantastic, you know. Uh, Ridley Scott was a huge inspiration. John Waters. John Waters would do a very amazing version of our story. Well, Ridley Scott, too, could really take that epic level. Yeah, Ridley yeah. Scott would. There'd be huge battles, I think. <laughs> <laughs> There's a documentary called Dangerous Days, actually, um, and it's about the making of Blade Runner, and that was very relative to our process. I remember watching it, kind of probably at my most depressed moment about the first attempt, and that gave me hope, just watching him talk about how hard it was to make Blade Runner. Um, that really kind of gave me a little bit of fire. Freedom is a real big theme. We needed freedom to happen for us on this record. Um, and so that's why it's such a, a strong theme. It's saying, like, would you live in the safety of a you know, beautiful, utopian, clean city where everything's, your life is spelled out for you and your emotions are doled out to you in medication? Or would you choose to live outside of that, but in constant danger? And, and there's no middle ground. You have to kind of choose between the two. And so it was a metaphor for like, how hard will you live? Like, how much risk will you take in order to be free? Because of the nature of the, the colorful nature of the record, I become uh, very interested in a festival in India called Holly Festival, which is literally the celebration of color. And they take all this pigment powder and they throw it everywhere. And then by the end of the day, everybody's just covered in all this color. And so then I started to think a lot about religion and a lot, a lot, a lot about the caste system. And then I I went and watched a couple videos of Holly Festival. And there was a couple of street performers, and I just heard this drum. It was really hard to hear. It was like 15 seconds of it, really. But it's 15 seconds I latched onto and I keep repeating in my head and I said, I want this 15 seconds. So then we just all recreated that 15 seconds yeah. and stretched it out so those drums, just that wall of drums coming from nowhere. We never had a song like that. And then just this tough ass riff coming in and then, you know, probably some of the bolder lyrics I've gotten right. And uh, we're really just proud of that one. That was yeah. a fun night in the studio though. Remember we like, we, we killed all the lights and we set up a strobe yeah. and we had all these drums going and people were hitting, up, hitting other things too, you know, and it was just like, just so much fun. Mm -hmm. When I think of that song, I really think of like the spirit of the band because it's always started like uh, even in our early days when we would have like double headers or something. Uh, we would play like the first show and be like, all right, everybody take it easy because we have another show coming up, and we would destroy basically all our equipment, our legs, like every. Mm -hmm. We would just be humbled masses at the end of that first show, and we have to go on to the next show. And then to now be uh, a band, a, a four piece without a real, you know, like a, a member that plays drums within the band, but to start a song on just drums is mm -hmm. kind of like. This man being like, no, you know, this is the way we do it because because people say we can't. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, there's a few songs on the record that start with drums, yeah. and they're arguably my favorite songs on the record. You know? Yeah, you know, I think uh, when when you know deciding that we were redoing this record and stuff, it was like, all right, let's let's reinvent, let's let's try to figure out different. Like we put down our guitars and, and bass and. and 
Like, there was a time where I think all four of us were just on keyboards and, like, kind of creating new sounds, and I don't think any of us really knew how to play them. Mm -hmm. Just, it was just like, all right, how how would I write a song if this was what I played? Mm -hmm. You know? And um, and that was, you know, it took the song in a completely different uh, direction. And then you would have that laid down, and then pick up your instrument that you were proficient on, and kind of write to that. Oh, Temple of Doom? Yeah, Yeah, Uh, Temple of Doom. We watched that about five times in Europe. Yeah. (laughs) Temple of Doom was always on television. One of the TVs somewhere. Yeah, backstage, on the bus, just watching Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Just constant. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty weird. It was, yeah, we we all rediscovered it together. It's crazy. Harrison Ford, at any point in that movie, He's two seconds away from dying at any time in that movie. He's just in yeah, danger. Yeah, the movies are just nonstop. Oh, no, just don't, yeah. You never Peril. know what's going to happen. I think, yeah. I think like, Steven Spielberg must have been on crack. Yeah. <laughs> when, he wrote, when he just came up, because it's... I mean, he's always in peril, mm-hmm. which is nuts. Well, and, you know, that's the unsung Indiana Jones, too. It is. Everybody it mentions is. Raiders and Last Crusade. I know. Course, yeah. Temple is the best. Yeah, yeah that, anyway, that's a soft spot. When you're long. not in peril, you're being touched by, like, dirty hands. Yeah. <laughs> So essentially you're in peril again because it's just germs. 